Today we are joined with Josh Howard. Thank you for joining us, Josh. Josh Howard is the CEO and founder of the viral Aussie sustainability brand, Single Use Ain't Sexy. Josh's business has saved up to 125,000 single use plastic soap bottles from landfills by replacing them with dissolvable hand soap tablets and reusable glass soap bottles. Single Use Ain't Sexy has won a Paws Fest award and has been featured in Time Out, Yahoo News, E! News, Better Homes and Gardens, and The Herald Sun, just to name a few. Josh also hosts the weekly live TV show Ticker Green on Ticker News, which is Australia's leading live news destination for sustainable innovation and entrepreneurship. Thank you for joining us from Australia, Josh. It's a pleasure to have you, and I'm really excited to jump into some sustainability questions with you. Thanks so much. Great. You know, just to get started in, to give the audience a better understanding of what your sustainability brand is, let's just start with the question of what is the mission of Single Use Ain't Sexy and how did you first get involved with plastic-free products? So our mission is to save single-use plastic bottles from landfill and our oceans and waterways and ending up in nature. And so we created this little dissolvable hand soap tablet, which you just add water to. So the way it works is you take your tablet, you take our reusable glass bottle, you fill it with tap water, you drop the tablet in, you let it dissolve, and then you pump out the foam and it comes out as a beautiful thick white foam that you wash your hands with. And then when you're done with the bottle, after you know two or three weeks, instead of throwing your plastic bottle into landfill, you fill it back up with tap water, you drop another tablet in, and the whole cycle starts again. So one of these sexy glass bottles with our beautiful logo on the front, single use say sexy, can save up to 25 single use plastic bottles from going into landfill every year. So it's super simple, it's super easy, it's meant to just make sustainability and environmentalism kind of stylish and sexy and engaging and fun, um, but also dealing with the serious issue of the single use plastics crisis. Wow, that is that is incredible. I think it's so interesting to see innovations like this and not to mention the product itself is so unique, but the bottle and the design is something that really looks good on someone's countertop and it makes you wanna be sustainable. Uh, like you said, that glass bottle with the logo. And how did you first get involved with plastic free products? Uh, has your career always you know, been in sustainability? Have you always been looking to create sustainable innovations or how did you get involved? No, my career definitely has not always been in sustainability. Believe it or not, I used to be a lawyer, um, but I, I never practiced. Um, but I went to law school and, and did that for a while. I think for me, the reason I did it is because I was freaking out about all of the plastic I was using and throwing out all the time. And so the, the difficulty there is I was kind of sitting there thinking like, what can I do? Like, what can I do that will be impactful? So I suffered from something that I think a lot of us suffer from, which is eco-anxiety. So it's this sense that the environmental situation in our world is so dire and so bad that nothing any of us will do will make a positive impact. And so I was kind of just feeling a little bit despondent about the situation. And then that was my motivation. I was like, you know what? Screw that. I've actually got to get up and do something. And so I started this business because I felt like there was an interesting way to help solve the single use plastic crisis, but do it in a fun way. So I like to describe our business as serious fun, dealing with a really serious issue, but in a fun kind of cheeky and irreverent way, which is why our name is single use ain't sexy. And our tagline is don't be a tosser, which the Australians and the Brits will, will understand what that means. But effectively the motivation was born out of our desire to just have an impact so I felt like what happened is we created this product and then I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm actually able to reduce my single use plastic consumption. And then we were like, okay, how do we scale this so that we can help other people do it and make it easy? Because the thing that I find really fascinating is that everybody wants to make more eco-friendly and more sustainable changes, but it has to be easy for them, has to be affordable and it has to look good. So unless it's those three things, I think it's really hard to get people to make that transition. And the ease part, the accessibility part, I think is particularly interesting. You have to be able to make sustainable products that just seamlessly, frictionlessly 
easily get into other people's daily life and routine rather than making them change their entire lives around your product. And so for us, that was really important. Just make it easy so people don't even have to think and they can just integrate it into their lives. That is amazing. You know, passion definitely leads to change. And I think your um, plastic-free products are a direct example of that, you know, taking it upon yourself to figure out what you can do. And it's not, it's one, one change that is attainable for the consumer, which is great. And I think that it's interesting here to talk about, for example, with plastic-free products, you're kind of eliminating that plastic bottle that would have ended up in the waste, correct? And that in itself is working towards circularity. Um, so I want to get your opinion on this because I ask a lot of different sustainability experts what they think on this topic. The difference between sustainability and circularity related to supply chain or related to your product that you've made, um, what do you think the biggest difference between just being sustainable or actually attaining circularity or is one needed for the other? How do you see those two working together? Yeah, I think with all this stuff, it's easy to get confused by the language, which sometimes does us all a disservice because it means that it gives people a reason to disengage or tune out because they just don't understand. So I think sustainability is simple. You're doing things which are more eco-friendly and sustainable, better for the planet. For me, circularity is the goal because it's about reusing again and again and again and again and again. So if you look at, you know, like schools of thought or ways of you know municipal governance like donut economics or the circular economy it's about reusing everything so it's about not bringing any kind of new materials or new waste into the system or into the ecosystem and i think that's really important so for us it's all about being circular with our bottle so we have a glass bottle with a stainless steel top for a reason it's because it's a circular piece of equipment that people are going to use again and again and again and they just buy the tablet refills and fill up like that so I think the 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 way that the world's I think probably most uh, progressive cities now are trying to be circular like Amsterdam is a, a really good example of a, a city which has embraced you know donut economics and the circular system is that they just are reusing everything as much as possible so if you think about our culture now there's a big shift towards reuse because everyone realizes that every time you use something new that item is going to end up probably in landfill or in nature being wasted and so for me sustainable practices are great and we should embrace them and we should encourage everybody to move towards them but I think the holy grail is that circularity where everyone is just reusing everything and finding ways to reuse everything so that could be in the soap industry, personal care or cleaning products that could be with fashion. You know, we're seeing this big kind of renaissance of, you know, online thrifting and in real life thrifting and reusing textiles that don't end up in landfill. I think we're seeing a lot of that with food packaging. I think we're seeing a lot of that with technology. People are wondering, all right, how can I reuse these things or how can I donate them to organizations which maybe break down the raw materials and then reuse them? People have been doing it with jewellery forever where they've been melting down certain jewellery and then getting it reset or reused into a different type of piece of jewellery. So this idea of reusing is not new. I think the way we're doing it and how many different um, sectors are embracing reuse is the thing that's getting me excited about circularity at the moment. I agree with you on the fact that, you know, there is a shift in attitude and, um, you know, towards reuse. And I think, like you said, there are a lot of industries now that are um, seeing, you know, an up an uprise in the idea of reusing and reusing is becoming cool. Um, you know, I know that in New York, thrifting, like you talked about in the fashion industry, is very popular here, um, you know, online thrifting as well. So there is definitely, I'm seeing a shift in, you know, consumer behavior. And I think that your product definitely complements this shift as well. And just talking about, because you were saying that circularity is kind of your holy grail. I think it's funny because even yesterday I was talking to someone else and they have that, they have a different idea of is sustainability the holy grail or is circularity the holy grail? But because circularity is your holy grail, 
how can you or how can we as a you know consumer or product producers ensure that supply chains for products such as just add water you know like your soap concept and other plastic free cleaning products maintain circularity as well you know the creation of say your glass your glass bottle or the creation of your tablet are there certain things that um, you implement into that process that promote circularity down the supply chain? I think there's some, there's some companies doing it really well that maybe the rest of us kind of are looking up to. So if you think about like Loop, for example, Loop is literally bottles and cans and aluminium canisters, refilling them and then giving them back to you. And so systems like that are interesting because I think they're completely taking out any kind of single use materials from the supply chain at all. Now, I think the big question in this movement is how scalable is that? And will people embrace that? I really hope they do because I think it's incredible. I think for us, our approach to, um, you know, creating a much, much lower carbon footprinted um, supply chain is that by transporting our tablets, instead of a full plastic bottle of liquid product, we're helping people reduce their carbon footprint in the supply chain because it's being water. And so for me, I always thought it was totally mad that people were shipping water. When water is a resource that comes out of your tap at home, you're already paying for it. And it's in your bathroom or your kitchen, which is the location where you're gonna to wanna to make and use our soap. And so for us, a big part of approaching, um, you know, issues with having a really bad for the planet supply chain was that instead of transporting an entire ship or plane or train or truck full of thousands and thousands of liquid based products, instead, you might have one or two containers of our tablets. And so for me, that was a really important piece of the puzzle, because I think a lot of the times on the front end, we do something that is environmental, but it's hard to ensure that we are doing something that's also eco-friendly on the back end, which to me is the supply mm -hmm. chain. And so for us, I love the idea of, you know, the just add water category and waterless beauty and personal care and home cleaning products, because you are actually taking out so many of the carbon emissions that come out of a heavy, heavy supply chain. And so that's been our approach. Um, it's not 100% circular because obviously we have to keep producing the tablets, but for our model, our model is all about driving impact. And so on the front end, it's about single use plastic bottle um, reduction. And then on the back end, it's about not shipping water. And I think those two things together um, are, you know, they're a really powerful and compelling proposition. Definitely. You look at how to kind of decrease the environmental impact in the supply chain. Definitely. There's no doubt that the thinking towards your product and the idea of reducing that liquid based product shipment um, is innovative. And I think it's, you know, that's why your brand has seen so much success because it's just kind of a re a rethinking of how we look at um, soap and hand soap and other personal cleaning products. So I think that in itself, like you said, those two on the front end and the back end definitely complement each other. And there's always, you know, time and opportunity to even become more circular or more sustainable, you know, over, over time. So I'm sure we'll see your brand kind of evolve throughout time as well. Um, thinking about how passionate you are in sustainability. And just going off of that passion, how can we empower consumers to make choices that are sustainable, you know, such as in such cleaning products, hygiene products that don't you that do not currently use single use plastics? I know you, you touched upon, you know, accessibility and, you know, a sleek design, but on top of that, how do you really see success and empowerment? Uh, I think it all comes from making it cool, you know, there's no reason why people shouldn't be able to look good and do it at the same time. I think they're two very different things. And I think people are allowed to want both. So just the same way you want to make sure that you're wearing clothes that you like, or that you're driving a car or you're riding a bike or a scooter or whatever your mode of transport is, you want to make sure that it reflects you. Like people are 
both kind of environmentally driven and brand driven. And I think a lot of us have to play in that space. So you need to make your product sexy. I think sexy sustainability is the future of the eco-friendly product movement. People want things to look nice in their homes and that is okay. I don't think people should be made to feel bad for wanting things to look good. So I want our soap to be on people's kitchen sinks and bathroom sinks and it's a status symbol for them that they care about style and that they care about sustainability. And so I think one of the interesting things to me is that unless it looks good, I think it's hard to get mass appeal of your product. And so I think you need to make things really aesthetically beautiful and design led. I think sustainability brands, which are design led have so much opportunity. So, so much opportunity. I feel really passionately about that. That's a lot of the, uh, intention behind our brand is to make sustainability sexy so that it has broad appeal and that people would want to use our products even if they didn't know that they were eco-friendly that's 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 the aim um the other things like i was saying before is it needs to be easy it needs to be frictionless it needs to easily integrate in, into people's lives there's no point bringing out a sustainability product that is so complicated or convoluted or complex that it's difficult for people to understand how it would work in their everyday lives. Because when you're trying to teach people new habits or new behavior, you can't make it so difficult that they can't envisage using it. And so for us, it's been about just making it easy and simple. So that means, you know, our tablet is simple. It means our bottle design is simple. It means our brand is simple. I think one of the reasons why we've been successful is the simplicity of our model, our brand, our product, our mission, it all fits. You know, it was, it's been designed to just fit together so that someone looks at one element of what we're doing and they're like, oh, I get it. I get it. I don't have to over-intellectualize it and I don't have to overthink it. And I think, so I think making it sexy and accessible and simple are the kind of key pillars to the future of sustainable products. Definitely. I think sometimes sustainability, you know, there is a lot of confusion behind, oh, is this sustainable or is there something better out there? Or, you know, at the end of the day, as long as we're promoting products such as yours that are a sustainable choice, you know, we're going to kind of make those type of products more well known in, in the consumer market. And I think it's great that you talk about um, the idea that you kind of want someone to use your product and not even know that it was created to be sustainable. And I think that's something super important to touch upon that in the recent years, I've seen so many brands, you know, you look at, you go buy something and then you look back and you you research what they're doing for sustainability. And before you'd find maybe a few, a handful had some kind of sustainability report or um, some type of sustainable practice implemented. But now that's definitely much more common. And I think we can agree that we hope that more brands and more cleaning products, more hygiene products adopt the same mindset, same in innovations that reduce single use plastics, correct? Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of different ways to do it. I think the interesting thing is seeing so many awesome, intelligent, creative people come up with cool ideas for how to do it. So for us, it's about owning the just add water category. So what we're doing is we started with hand soap, but we're now building out a full home suite of personal care and home cleaning products, but in tablet form. So I've always been obsessed with products that you just add water to, always, even, even since I was a kid, you know? And so this is not new. We're not reinventing the wheel. If you think about it, you know, a few products I had, for example, when I was a kid, my grandparents used denture cleaning tablets. We used chicken stock cubes to cook in my home. We drank um, tang, which is you know, like powdered cordial that you add water to. So the just add water category has always existed. I think leveraging it for other categories of products around the home is what we're doing. And I think there's a massive opportunity here. Um, and, and, and I'm looking at other, you know, other companies doing it really well too. There's a lot of companies in the US and overseas which are doing consumables. So it might be like little tablets that are vitamins or tea drops or, um, you know, flavored water and it's all in little tablet form, mix it with water. It's leveraging the same dissolvability and effervescence technology that we're doing. And you're just seeing that happen in a lot of categories. So 
I think what's interesting is there's lots of different ways to be refillable and there's lots of different ways to be reusable. It's been particularly interesting for me seeing how creative people can be with their ideas in this space and then which of those resonate well with customers, I think is also key because what you're seeing is you're seeing customers resonate with brands which are making it easy for them right and so all these ideas end up coming into a funnel and the easy smart good ones that customers love the most come out through the funnel and they're ones that have longevity commercially and that are successful as businesses definitely it's really really inspiring to see all the ideas come together and like you said figure out which ones the consumers really grab onto and get really excited about and sometimes you're surprised but you know, at the end of the day, if it's a sustainable product, we're here for it. And I think that is really interesting. You bring up the point, and I'm just sitting here now thinking about all of the Just Add Water products as a child that I can remember. And I remember, you know, even those towels that you add water to and expand, yeah. or um, like you said, I remember my grandparents using denture cleaner as well. And I know living in a city, uh, those chicken stock cubes are really convenient instead of lugging home, you know, quarts and quarts of chicken broth to make it a recipe. So there definitely is so many different just add water products that people are familiar with. And maybe this idea of just add water in your personal hygiene routine might not be so popular, but you have made it very popular. And I'm definitely seeing the introduction of this, you know, in more bathrooms in around the world in more cities. And I'm really excited to see this product really become that one product which has and will continue to make it out of that funnel you talked about. And I just maybe want to talk to you then, you know, thinking about how your product has kind of emerged from that funnel and been really loved by consumers. How have you seen the progress in acceptance or, you know, even the demand for your Just Add Water product or other Just Add Water products, you know, expand over the past two years? Yeah, the, the demand has been really encouraging. I mean, we sold out twice in our first 12 months, which I was not expecting, but it shows you that people want to make those more sustainable changes. You just have to, you know, serve it up to them in a way that, that is compelling. And so I think for us, having customers who are obsessed with our brand and our product and our mission has been a really awesome and exciting way for us to grow you know a lot of our business is based on word of mouth and that's super encouraging because it means that people genuinely love it you know if someone is not being paid yet they're still telling people about a, a brand that is the holy grail of marketing it's the oldest form of marketing it's word of mouth we've all done it we've all been told about a business through word of mouth and that's a really powerful kind of tool to have your existing customer base evangelize your business to their communities. So I think that's really, that's been really, really encouraging and really exciting for us. Um, we just closed a big equity crowdfunding round, which was very exciting. So it was the fastest, um, you know, raise to reach its maximum target on the platform. Um, equal Congratulations. Faster. Thank you very much. So I think for us now, that means that we're in a position to really scale our business. Um, now that we have some capital. So that was really exciting because I think what happens when you do an equity crowd fund is you have your customer base and other everyday people who are passionate about your mission to end single-use plastic bottles getting behind your business. And like your customers are, they're also evangelizing your business in their community. So I think that's really powerful as well. And I think we've grown because it just makes sense. People see our business and they see our product and they think, oh, that makes such sense. Like that just should exist and so we've had a lot of press attention we've won a lot of awards which has been really awesome and there's just momentum behind our business there is this feeling that we are onto something special and I'm really proud of that and I'm really excited about what we can keep building. I'm excited for you I think like you said that old way of marketing you know having the consumer just talk about your product because they love it is so important and definitely shows that your product is very unique and has a special trajectory. I know that for your brand, definitely just single use and sexy definitely catches your eye. It's not the traditional name of a sustainability brand that I've seen. And I'm okay. sure that the bottle, you know, although it's so aesthetically pleasing, if you want to hold it up, it has your, your name on there. And that definitely, I'm sure is a conversation starter. I wonder how many times people that 
have that bottle in their home, have a guest over and they come out and they say, what, what's your soap bottle about? And that in itself, you know, continues on that conversation and thinking about how many, you know, you might just be one person who has one type of soap in their bathroom. But if your guest leaves your house knowing about the ability to then have these dissolvable hand soap tablets, you that marketing just keeps on going and going. And that's why I'm sure your demand for this product has, you know, you've just seen it expand so much. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I think the name is really important. Like I think the name of a direct to consumer brand and any business for that matter is the single most valuable piece of real estate that you have and it's free to create. And so having a name that's really compelling and engaging is important because the first thing that happens when you hear the name of a business or a brand or a movement or an organization or a charity or whatever is you either want to know more or you don't. And so having a really compelling brand name at least gets people over that first hurdle where something clicks in their brain and they're like, oh, that's interesting or that's different or that's, that's fascinating. What does that mean? And then they want, to, they want to learn more. They want to know more about the brand and the proposition. And so probably one of the reasons why, you know, we've tried to make our logo and our brand name feature so prominently is so that people do say, what's that soap on your counter or what's that brand or what do they represent? Oh, that's cool. Or that's funny. Or that's interesting. I want to know more. So I think for us, a big part of that has been really leaning into the tone of voice of the brand. You know, there's a lot of kind of cheekiness and innuendo with it, which is obviously designed to make sustainability fun, like I was saying. And so for us, I think that has been really, really um, a key part of our growth is giving people something to talk about. So any kind of opportunity to grow organically is driven by being, you know, a topic of conversation for people. And so I think that strategy in any business is crucial. And I think for us, we've really leaned into making ourselves kind of newsworthy, if that makes sense. Definitely. And I think I walk away from this conversation realizing that Single Use Ain't Sexy has really broken down sustainable product into something that isn't so overwhelming for the consumer. Um, it's something that you can get excited about, but it just, like you're saying, it just makes sense. And I think you've nailed it and you've really thought about this product. Um, and it definitely shows because this product is unlike others in the personal hygiene industry. And it was really a pleasure to talk to you today and speak to you about the progress in the acceptance of this product that you've seen over time. And, you know, we support you here and we're really excited to be able to highlight your sustainability brand and all of the great work you're doing towards making consumers excited about sustainability. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I love chatting. I should say too, I'd love anyone watching to follow our journey on Instagram. Uh, that's where we're kind of sharing all of the information about our impact. So we're at single use ain't sexy on Instagram. And then also you can check out our website, which is single use ain't sexy.com. At the moment we're available in Australia, but we're going to be launching shortly in other, in other locations too. Stay tuned for that. Great. Thank you so much, Josh. Yes, definitely. Keep us posted on your worldwide launch. You know, I'm sure there are so many viewers out there that are excited and eager to get their hands on this product after hearing about it. So thank you again for your time. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. I've loved it. I'm Josh and I'm not a tosser. But unfortunately, 13 billion single-use plastic bottles are tossed out in Australia every year. That's one million footy fields full of plastic bottles. And this stuff never biodegrades. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces that never go away. Remember that single-use plastic soap bottle you used 20 years ago to wash your hands? It still exists. And that's why I created Single Use Ain't Sexy. Single Use Ain't Sexy is an Aussie sustainable hand soap brand that empowers everyone to do their bit to solve our plastic crisis. All you need is one dissolvable hand soap tablet, one sexy reusable glass bottle, and add some tap water, eliminating the need for endless plastic packaging and also helping you to minimize your carbon footprint by not shipping water. It's so simple. Since our launch one year ago, 
We've made it our mission to make the planet greener, cleaner, and sexier for all. And with your help, we've saved up to 125,000 single-use plastic bottles from Aussie Landfill. We've had some of the biggest names in Australia get behind our brand, and we've gotten a lot of media traction. And the part I love the most, we've built an incredible community of obsessed Aussies who love our mission and care about the planet. You see, last year, we completely sold out a product. Twice. So now it's time to expand our range of tablets throughout the home, build up our resources, and multiply our impact by 10. Our ultimate vision is to become the global leader in the Just Add Water category and transition the world to sustainable products. This one tablet will change the world. So if you believe in a greener, cleaner, sexier world, come with us. I want you to own a part of Single You Say Sexy so we can protect this beautiful planet of ours together.